What if I told you in just about 10 minutes, you could make a beautiful batch of food for your dogs. Your dogs will thank you for it. Your vet bills will thank you for it. And the longevity of your dogs is what's important to all of us. I know it. And we want them to live their very best lives. So let me show you this recipe. I've got several other videos that you can watch if you want just a regular recipe. It's still the same short process. This recipe came from some of my viewers asking about certain ailments of their pets. This recipe we're gonna make right here is for heart. So if you need heart preventive, if you have a dog with mitral valve disease or a heart murmur, or is just a breed that typically will have those kinds of things, then this is going to be the video you wanna watch. It's gonna be quick, it's gonna be easy, and your pets are gonna be so grateful for it. So let's get started. Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jen with Gentastic Journey, and today I've got an exciting recipe for you. A lot of you have reached out with different ailments that your pets have or diseases or conditions that your dogs have, and I want to help you with that. I am not a vet, but I follow what I think is the most awesome holistic vet, and her name is Dr. Judy Morgan. This is one of her books. She's got several books out. This book I really enjoy because it's yin and yang nutrition for dogs. This is a book that I refer to all the time. So if someone says, hey Jen, my dog has kidney disease, what should I do? And so I'll flip through this book and find recipes. And I'll usually, if it's in my comments in my YouTube videos, then I will send recipes to people. So today I'm going to show you a recipe that I don't really need the book for because I make it all the time, but it is a heart healthy dog recipe. And this is for dogs that have heart conditions that have the potential for heart conditions. I have three Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. They are known for having heart conditions, specifically mitral valve disease. I have two that have heart murmurs right now of the three and I'm giving preventive to the other one. This is a great meal for those dogs that have heart conditions or the potential. And it's also just an overall healthy meal. So even if your dog doesn't have any of these diseases, this is a great meal for your dogs. And I don't feed this every week. This is something that I feed probably once a month or once every six weeks. You've seen my other videos where I show you that I do switch out my meats for these dogs very regularly. So every batch is a different meat. Two of my dogs are sensitive to chicken, so I don't ever put chicken in, but I do put turkey, pork, beef are my main ones. I do put fish in, but I don't use fish just on its own. So I do suggest that you go to my other videos. They're a little bit longer. They're a little bit more involved. I explain why you want to use different ingredients. This recipe, you're going to want to use these ingredients because they're good for the dog's heart. So let me start by sharing with you the ingredients that we have. So first I have beef. And for this recipe is actually designed for one dog. So I've got five dogs. I've got three Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. All of them are rescues. And then I've got lab mixes, a black one and a chocolate lab. They don't really look like labs, but <laughs> you've seen them, you know, you know about them. If you haven't already, you can check out my video about meeting the rescues and I will tell you all their stories, how we restored their health and how they're just living their best lives, which brings me a lot of joy. So, all right, let's get into these ingredients. So I have ground beef. For me, because I have a lot of dogs, I have six pounds of ground beef. The recipe calls for one pound of ground beef, one pound of beef heart. Beef heart can be hard to find in stores, but if you search online, you can find places that will ship it to you. It's not terribly expensive. So this is uh, two pounds worth of beef heart, and this was, I believe, $6. It's not terribly inexpensive, but again, I'm not making this recipe all the time. One thing about heart is you do want to feed your dogs if they have a health condition, the thing that they have an ailment in. So as an example, if you have a dog with liver problems, then liver is a great ingredient to have. If they have heart conditions, then heart is really good to feed them. We have our beef heart. We also have beef liver. So it doesn't call for a lot of beef liver, four ounces of beef liver, and we will, these come in little pouches, and so I will use one of these. 
It calls for two eggs. So we will use more than two eggs. We'll use six eggs. It calls for four ounces. Uh, so I said four ounces. It's three ounces of beef liver, four ounces of carrots. I've got a lot more carrots here because again, I'm feeding about um, three times as much. And then kale. And the kale, you wanna make sure that it's finely ground. This is uh, all cut up. And then when we cook it, it's going to break down even further. Two ounces of kale. Then there's ginger root. You can grate the ginger. I put the ginger in here already and I just made it into a little bit of a paste and it calls for one tablespoon of ginger root. And then at the time of feeding, you can put sardines in there. If you're gonna gently cook your food, you can also put these in right at the end after everything's cooled down and you just mix it in. And these are sardines, unsalted, that's important. And these are in water. I do get them in water. A lot of times they come in olive oil. Olive oil is an oil that I just don't feed to my dogs. I do feed them fish oil, but not olive oils. So let's get started. I'm gonna pull out my crock pot. This is my Hamilton Beach crock pot. It is almost primarily used for dog food because I do make dog food about every three days. The nice thing about this crock pot is I found a silicone liner that makes clean up a breeze. I just pull this out and I'm able to wash this separately. If something gets in here, I'm usually just washing this out, but nothing lower scrubbing off bits of, of beef and things like that. I love this silicone liner and I will put everything that I've used in the description below. I'll put the recipe in the description box below. I will put the silicone liner uh, where I get it from and also the crock pot. I also use a food processor later on in this process and I will include all of that as much as I can. I spent a lot of time on that description box. So please go there and look for some of these things. I will also link to Dr. Judy Morgan and her book, which I would highly recommend. Fantastic. And she's fantastic to follow. She's very direct and honest and she has a love for animals and she is a vet, uh, but she's also a holistic vet. So she does Eastern and Western <laughs> medicine for dogs. I'm super excited. I'm out in Southeastern Wisconsin and I was having such a hard time finding a holistic vet. Those of you that have watched my vaccine video, I talk about how I get a little bit of pushback from my vets when I push back about the vaccines and not getting them all done at once. And I'm very careful about which vaccines my dogs get because they really don't need them all. They got them when they were puppies. A lot of my dogs have come from puppy mills. So they had vaccines early in the day. They had vaccines at the time of me rescuing them. And a lot of these vaccines they don't either need or they don't need them ongoing. So check out that video on my vaccines. Are we over vaccinating our dogs? And I think you'll find some interesting information in there. So I found a holistic vet and I'm super excited. It's a little bit further for me, but I'm very excited about it. So we have a vet appointment actually today for Molly, which is one of my Cavaliers. And I'm excited to meet her and just see if we can get on the same page. Uh, I'll obviously tell her what food I'm feeding. My other vet had no problem with me feeding gently cooked food which is what this is. Uh, one thing, I get a lot of comments from you guys about just struggling with cooking food for your dogs and tons of pots and pans, and it's just such a process. I think that using a crock pot is the easiest. There's very little cleanup. You're just gonna clean up this silicone liner and you're pretty much done, unless you grind the food like I do. Uh, I grind food because I've got two dogs with almost no teeth, so it's a little bit simpler for them to have it ground up just to make sure everything is as little as it can be as far as particles. So you're not gonna have tons and tons of pots and pans. This is going to take you about 10 minutes to put all this stuff together. You're going to leave it on a low temperature. If everything is refrigerated, then you can put it on a low temperature for six to eight hours. Uh, I put it on eight because I've got such a large quantity because I've got five dogs. If you have it frozen, then I would put it at eight to 10 hours to make sure that that frozen food gets cooked. Again, this is gently cooked and it doesn't have to be cooked to death. <laughs> it just needs to be cooked enough. And Dr. Judy Morgan, she does uh, agree with raw feeding if that's what you prefer as well. Uh, I prefer not to do raw feeding just with five dogs. I get a little bit nervous about just having raw food all over. This has worked really well for me. I've been doing this for about 10 years and my dog's blood work is fantastic. So I'm kind of like, why would I switch at this point? This food is super easy to measure out. I just scoop it with a 
large ice cream scooper and I'll show you that at the end as well. What I did is I measure it onto a food scale and I figure out how much each dog needs and then I determine how many scoops that that would be for them. So I do feed my dogs twice a day. Uh, you can vary that. It can be once a day, twice a day, three times a day. Twice a day seems to be really good for my dogs. So it works out really well for us to feed half of their feeding in the morning and half of their feeding 12 hours later in the evening. So we do about 7 a.m. and 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And then we will cook this and then we'll come back and put it into a container. It's literally that simple. So hopefully this is what you've been looking for. This is ground beef. The recipe says cubed beef or ground beef. So you can do either one. I buy these monstrosities from our local Costco or Sam's Club. If those of you that are in the United States, I don't know if those are outside of the United States or not, but they're just warehouse shopping, grocery stores. Well, they sell everything. The beef liver, you do need to keep that frozen at all times if you're purchasing it like that. I'm gonna put that back in the freezer here in just a minute. And with any food, just like you would cook for your family, you want to make sure that you are cleaning your surfaces, cleaning. Uh, I throw my scissors into the dishwasher just to make sure everything gets clean. You don't want to have any issues for your family or your pets. Okay, so that was the beef, that was the beef liver. And then the next thing we're going to do is the beef heart. I got this from a company called Wild Fork. They're out of Evanston, Illinois. At least they, they have locations all over. But the one that was closest to me was Evanston, Illinois, and they deliver it within a couple of days. You can sign up for a kind of a membership with them and then you don't pay any shipping or you can pay a little bit of shipping costs, but they do waive it on your first order. So I would highly recommend Wild Fork if it's in your area, but lots of places will sell organ meat, which is great for our dogs. Dr. Morton does say that you can cook this in a bunch of ways. You can put all this together and you want to grind up the carrots and the kale and things like that, but you can put it into a loaf pan and make it like a meatloaf. I don't do that just because I like to put as much moisture as I can into my dogs. They aren't big drinkers, especially the Cavaliers. My Black Lab drinks a ton, but my three uh, little dogs rarely ever go to the dog bowl. They are fans of ice cubes, so we do feed them ice cubes. Um, I just think it's really important to keep our dogs super hydrated. So this it has a lot more moisture in it. it, comes out like a canned food consistency. So that is super good for my dogs. All right, I'm gonna count these out just so that I don't lose track as I'm talking. Put this away as well. All right, so my carrots have already been washed. So I'm just gonna cut these down just a little bit. Just helps them cook through and then it fits better in the crock pot. <laughs> If you're going to cook this in a loaf pan, which is a perfectly fine way to do it, again, you just wanna make sure that that kale is ground up really well. So you may wanna put this in a little food chopper, food processor, and make sure that this kale is finely, finely chopped. Same thing with the carrots. They don't have to be as finely chopped, but the kale does. You don't really wanna feed your dog spinach in place of kale. Spinach is high in oxalates, so they can be hard on the dog system, just like they can be hard on the human system. And then I'm going to add the ginger. And get the rest of these carrots in. For dogs that have heart conditions or truly any dogs, good treats for them. And these are easy treats that you don't have to cook. Easy treats for them are freeze-dried beef hearts, freeze-dried beef liver, kale chips. Again, no sodium for the kale chips. You can give them carrot chips, just little raw carrots. I don't do a lot of that. I've noticed that my dogs, if I feed them raw vegetables, they come out whole in their poop, which makes me think that they're really not getting the nutrition then at that point. So, you know, I'll give them something once in a while, but it's not something I'm going to do on a regular basis. They prefer, believe it or not, of all things, just ice cubes. They love ice cubes. And I will uh, show you a little clip of when I turn, they can hear the machine turn on and they come tearing from wherever they are in the house and come over for their ice cubes. It's the craziest thing. And I, I don't know how they all love them. 
So it might be just a dog thing or they're just afraid to miss out, <laughs> but definitely our Cavaliers absolutely love them. Our Black Lab loves them as well. And then our Chocolate Lab, she takes it because she doesn't want to miss out. She sometimes eats it, sometimes doesn't. And then somebody else will come and grab it when she's not look looking. Okay, so this is our kale. I've been doing this so long that I don't really measure, but it wants two ounces. So I kind of just think because I've got six pounds of beef, you know, I need more like six or eight ounces of kale. If you watch some of my other videos, I usually put the vegetables on the bottom because it keeps it from all the beef from all sticking to the bottom. But we're gonna put some water in here and it'll be just fine. And then we're going to put some of these eggs in here. Again, this recipe calls for two eggs. I'm doing six. Do not put shells directly into their food. If you want to use the shells for the calcium, you need to thoroughly clean them and sanitize them. So you wanna use boiling water and you wanna really clean these. Uh, so where they're completely sanitized, there's a lot of stuff on the outside shells of eggs that you, bacteria and things you don't want your dog to have. Then once they're thoroughly dry, you can grind them into a powder as well. I use a mineral supplement that has calcium in it. So I don't feel like I need to do that all the time. I am not somebody that loves to be slaving in the kitchen for all this dog stuff. I love to cook for them and I do it every three days, but this is really not that hard. This is, you know, 10 minutes of prep. I will typically do this at night. I will set it right before I go to bed for six or eight hours or 10 if I have frozen food in here. And then it automatically clicks to warm. So if I sleep longer than six hours, which I'm about a seven hour sleeper, uh, it'll put it on warm for an hour. And then I'll get up and I'll just unplug it, let it cool down a little bit. I do process it when it's warm, but not piping hot. And that's just for my own safety. That is how this all works. So we've got all of our foods in here. Did I forget anything? No, we're gonna put the sardines in at the end when it's cool. So we, I will put the rest of this away. Let me put some water in here because just like when you use a crock pot at home, it needs a little bit of moisture. It's got some moisture from the eggs and it'll have a little bit of moisture from the meats, but I always put just a little bit extra in because it helps when I'm grinding the food later in the process. Okay, and I'm just gonna put a cup of water in here. If you have less food in here, you might only need a quarter of a cup or a third of a cup. This just makes sure it all has plenty of liquid to allow it to cook properly. So I will put the top on and we will set this crock pot and I'm going to put it on low for eight hours uh, just because I have it's almost full to the top. This amount will go into my container that I use for dog food and then I will show you my container. This was just cleaned this morning. This is my dog container. It is plastic, but I do wait to put the dog food in here until the dog food is cooled off. So no concerns from it leaching into the dog food, but it's also BPA free plastic. So not a concern for me. This is a great size container for it really fits pretty much everything that's in my crock pot. If for some reason I make just a little bit more, I just put it in another smaller plastic container. We'll use that first and then this sits in our refrigerator and then we feed them twice a day. All right, I will catch you back in about eight hours. Uh, we've let this crock pot cool, so it's barely warm and it'll be perfect for me to work with. When it's too hot, it's just a little bit dangerous, so I wait, I let it cool off, I keep this cockeyed for a few hours and then I'm ready and now it's nice and warm and not hot. Okay, so my next tool that I'm going to use is a food processor. And this food processor is from Magicos, and I will link this below. This is just a, you can't even read the label anymore. I've had this for such a long time, but this thing is a power horse. So again, I blend or process my food after it's been cooked. 
If you have dogs that have perfectly good teeth and like to tear through meat, this is a, probably a step you don't have to do. I just find this to be easier. The consistency is like dog food that comes in a can. And that way I'm able to scoop it out and feed it to them. And I know it's all incorporated. So there's not like more heart than beef or, or what, whatever the case may be. I also put my vitamins and minerals in this when it's cool. That just saves me a step when I feed them in the morning and the evening. The sardines, you can feed the sardines at time of feeding. It says one to two sardines per dog. So I just put three cans of sardines directly into this once it's cool. And that helps me again, save a step. Since they don't have to be cooked, this is after the cooking process. So sardines don't have to be cooked. Okay, so let's get started on this process. I usually put half of the batch into the food processor at a, at a time. And then this just allows me to, I know how much <laughs> fits in here and it's not the whole thing. So we'll just do part of it. And I kind of cut it in half since I put some of the heart on top. The heart when it cooks looks a little bit like liver wood and it's got a similar consistency. And as you know, we have liver and heart in here plus ground beef. My cheat is I usually put a rag between the two because I never can get it all in without spilling. I've now got Charlie down here waiting to see if I drop anything. I tend to be a little bit messy. And so he knows that he should probably rape right here. I can also see the eggs that cooked in here. All the carrots are nice and soft. And I'll also wanna get all of the juice in here as well. To get some of the juice easily, I use uh, just a glass measuring container and I get the last bit of it. This food processor has a line on here that says how far I can fill it. I always go a little bit over, but never, I shouldn't say never have a problem. I sometimes have a problem where a little too much water is in there and then it kind of shoots out the top which is why my dogs are all sitting around, but we're going to uh, process this a little bit and then I'm gonna put some of the vitamins and minerals in here. Okay, and this is why I wear my apron because I don't wanna get this on me, but let me get the vitamins. Okay, so I use RX Vitamins for pets, RX Essentials for dogs. This is a multivitamin supplement. I also use from the same brand, RX Vitamins for Pets, Canine Minerals. I think the minerals are super important. I also use Sacred 7 Mushroom. It's a mushroom extract powder, and it has a whole bunch of mushrooms in here. Again, check with your vet and see if these are some supplements that your dogs may benefit from. I also use Sea Kelp, and this is just back 40 dogs, Sea Kelp. So these are some of the things that I add in. So I use this for my second batch, and then I put the rest of them in directly into the batch. I have on the top of each one of these, as you can see, what I need to put into each one. So this one is fairly simple. It's just three in each batch. I'm supposed to have six total. And then minerals. I put four in each batch. Vitamins, I also put four in each batch. This is not a ton of vitamins. I am not maxing them out. This is just, just like we do as humans. We want to make sure that we have all the vitamins and minerals that we need. And I do the same thing for my dogs. They could probably stand to have more of this vitamin and mineral supplement, but this is just gives a little bit of insurance that we've gotten it all. As an example in this batch, I only put in carrots and kale as vegetables. So, you know, maybe there are some vitamins that they're missing because they don't have the other cruciferous vegetables I normally put in. I would recommend you watch my first video. It's my most in-depth video about why, why I use all these ingredients. I'm using ground pork in that recipe. I could just go into why to feed gently cooked versus raw why we won't, don't want to feed kibble. So it's just a more in-depth video. This one is specific to dogs that have some heart conditions or that could benefit some from some heart preventive type food. So that's why I did this video. And then we'll put the sardines in as well. Okay, so when the batch was cool, we put all of our vitamins and minerals. We added our sardines, which you can also add 
at the time of feeding. Sardines do not need to be cooked. They just need to be added. So one or two sardines per day. So if you feed twice a day, one in the morning, one in the evening, or you could do what I do, which is I just grind it all up into the batch because as you know, I've got dogs that have no teeth. And so that's a problem for me. So I grind everything up. You don't have to grind it up if you don't want to. With the beef heart, it is a lot like liver where it's a little bit tougher of a meat. You would want to cut that real, real small into bite-sized pieces for your dogs. Unless they're very aggressive chewers, then I guess they can chew at it too. Either way. So in my other videos, I stopped at the section where I just put it all into my container and then I put it into the fridge. And again, you wanna keep this for about three to five days in the fridge. This will last me only three days because I've got a lot of dogs. <laughs> what I decided to do in this video is I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it comes out of the refrigerator. The consistency is, I think, important because you wanna know what you're dealing with. This is the dog food. You can see it's not moving anywhere in the container. The fats and juices make it nice and it becomes, it's very easy to scoop as you could see. I always scoop flat scoops because that's how I measured it. You can see it's not runny, it's pretty easy to work with. I just wanted to show you what that would look like when you get it out of the refrigerator. So it's super easy to measure this out. I just scrape it against the side and then depending on which dog it is, they'll either get two of these or they'll get four or five of them and I have dogs of all sizes. I've got three Cavalier King Charles Spaniels and two Labs. As promised, I want to show you what happens when the ice maker goes on in this house. So let's get to that. So it's time to test out our theory on how excited my dogs get with ice cubes. So this is Jax, he's managing our yard. It is his main responsibility that he's put upon himself. We also have over here, Hazel. She's our chocolate lab and she's just lounging. Charlie thinks he's a cat, so he's always up on top of the chair. We've got Brie down here. Whenever I have food out, she's always on her little mat. And Molly is mulling around because I did have dog food out a few minutes ago. So let's see, let's let them get settled and then we will show you what happens when this ice maker goes on. Okay, so we've got ice for our friends. They're all wagging their tails, very excited. We will give each one an ice cube. Creepy, whoopsie, sorry, sweetie. Sometimes ice cubes are hard to get off the floor because these have a flat bottom. And so I do try and get them in, them in their mouths or they really struggle. Good boy, Jaxie, so gentle. So that, is how it goes in this house when ice cubes come out. They all absolutely love them. These two always go on this mat and eat next to each other. And Jax always finds another space because the little ones will come and steal his ice cube if he lets them. Molly always just finds a spot by herself. She's deaf and so she can't hear if somebody comes up alongside her and tries to get hers. She's also the one with no teeth, except she's got four, but they don't work together. They're in four very different spots. So she is eating her ice cube. And then Hazel, where's your ice cube? Are you just guarding it? Hazel doesn't love ice cubes. She's gotten better at it, but she guards hers and then she'll eat it in a little bit. So <laughs> luckily we have a couple rugs around here. So there's no water on the floor from this, but this is an exciting part of the day for these dogs. They love their ice cubes. So try it on your dogs. It's a healthy, easy treat that's got no calories. If you haven't already checked it out, check out my two other videos that I have on making dog food. One of them is making it from ground and it's very detailed about why the, you put the different ingredients and the different supplements in the dog food. It's a little bit more in depth, but it gives you a very good first view at how to cook gently cooked dog food. Again, 10 minutes, to prepare it 10 minutes after it's done and you've got a great meal for your dogs for several days. The other video is what happens when you have 
frozen food that you forgot to take it out of the freezer, I've got an easy way to make that work as well. So whatever your situation is, I've got a solution for you and your dogs and their health will thank you for it. So thanks for joining me today. I enjoyed cooking some heart healthy meals for our dogs. See you in the next video.